keep all various sizes of the batteries and it didn't seem to make much sense because we ended up with a whole bunch of different sizes and they're difficult to store and so on. <clears throat> so we opted for one size battery. Um, these NCM cells are the best uh, uh, capacity for size and weight. They're 1.4 kilograms, they're 95 amp hour. We've had them tested many times. Uh, they stack up well. We actually use exactly these cells in the IMEV uh, battery upgrade program. So therefore our purchasing power is pretty big because we buy lots of them. Um, so, but to fit them into a uh, home built car or a conversion, um, we've got the problems of, of uh, we call it cell rash, where um, the outside of the cell is covered in a blue tape. It covers up a metal outer casing of the battery, and that bat that outer casing is actually one of the poles. It's it's a, a negative ter uh, sorry positive terminal. So if you were to have these rubbed through and a little bit of tape rubbed through, uh, jostling about maybe in a battery pack, it might not be quite as tight. You can have a pretty uh, disastrous short circuit, um, which could cause a fire, uh, depending on the battery box that it's in. But uh, at, at, at best, uh, you've lost yourself thousands of dollars worth of cells. So we decided to um, look, look at some options, and there was a, a particular battery company that were making these frames for a different battery. Uh, we approached them and said, can we uh, have you make them for our size cells? And they said, yep, no problem at all. I had to buy a minimum quantity, as, it, as you do. <coughs> um, and these are the frames that they come in. So you've basically got a base, and you've got a top, you put your cell in between, um, and then you run some threaded rod from one end to the other, and that makes it a nice solid sort of battery pack. That holds them nice and neatly. Um, I think if you went, say, 10 cells, you'd be well within your 20G limits as far as, uh, as, far as uh, safety goes. Uh, and then we made something called a bookend. A uh, very simple thing, you could, uh, Two bolts through from under through there to hold it to the floor of your battery box, um, and uh, and then your threaded rods goes through like this either end. If I was putting a long string in every tenth cell, I'd put one of these in. Um, you can uh, weld some uh, screws, like some cuphead screws, into here so they come down, and you can drill some holes in the bottom if you want to put nuts in from underneath. Um, they'll go they'll go into the base either way, either that way. If you cut for space, or this way, which is easier to handle, <coughs> they give you a gap between the cells. So if you wanted to run some air cooling, and you could get rather fancy with this, so you could run some air cooling, but you might have some sort of uh, uh, trigger from your BMS to trigger the air conditioner to come on, and uh, you could put a valve in there that would come across, depending on the circumstances, whatever relays you activate, and it could pump cold air through there. Up to you. Um, but yeah, definitely could use just a fan if you wanted to. Uh, run a fan at one end of the battery box through this and you'll get some sort of airflow between the cells so you've got some sort of cooling. Um, usually you build a battery pack big enough that it doesn't need to be cooled unless you're doing DC fast charging. With DC fast charging becoming more common on home builds nowadays um, or conversions, you know. Anyway, on the top of them you've got a channel. And that one there, you could run um, you could run your cell tap validator wiring up to the center and run it right through the center. The reason you might want to do that is you don't really want these wires laying across other terminals. Um, they could chase through and they just burn through. So you want to have them nice and neat. You run from the terminal to the center and off. And you'd, you'd, you'd wrap that in some sort of conduit or something like that. Um, and that'd be a nice, neat, tidy solution. And when you finish, you've got these little lids. They basically clip on top. And that's all you see. So if you can imagine just a sea of white and your cabling coming out either end. Now, your terminals. What we did, because we're sick and tired of drilling fast bar, we got a we got sheets of copper plate, um, CNC water jet cut um, to make up uh, the uh, interconnects. Now, because every one of them is going to be the same, uh, we decided well we could make a few hundred of these, which we did. Um, we make them with elongated holes to allow for any little bit of give over a long length. Um, it's, uh, I think it's like 10 mil by uh, uh, 6 mil, something like that. So, oh no, 9 mil by 6 mil. <clears throat> so it gives you that extra couple of millimeters to play with and you basically just plonk them straight on top and that makes your interconnect bars. 
Now we buy them, so we get them made in 1.2 metre lengths. So six holes might not suit you. You might want four holes. We just take the length and just chop off what you want. Easy, easy peasy, drop them on, that's your interconnect bars. Um, not the cheapest thing, but when you calculate the amount of time sitting there drilling maybe 400 holes or whatever, uh, it's pretty cheap then. So that's our quick fit, easy fit and um, secure way of putting these cells in the cars. Um, this way keeping them all separated. Um, we'll also um, save on any sort of what we call battery rash. Um, because now, instead of putting single cells into a box, I don't know what people do, we're just going to pick up the whole slab, drop it in, put two bolts in either end, job's done, put your, your, um, put your uh, interconnect uh, uh, bars on top, uh, and then you've just got to run through your cell tap wiring for your BMS. Um, that saves so much time, looks neater, properly restrained. Um, your 20G impact would be rated on just this string because you're putting them down to these plates, not the whole battery box. If your battery box is properly mounted to your vehicle, we're worried about the string, not the whole box in this case. But that's an argument you can, might have with the engineer. Um, that's the way we see it anyway. But yeah, look, um, not all that expensive. They're about five bucks for the frame. The cells are 165, so each cell with a frame is $170. Um, Absolutely best bang for buck as far as uh, um, uh, any, uh, state of the uh, <coughs> capacity uh, versus the size and the weight. Um, you can make a fairly big battery um, using this sort of technology. That's what I want to talk to you about and I hope if you're ever doing a conversion or a home build or something like that, you might consider these. We also actually had these specially made to fit the cells that we pull out of the IMEVs when we do the IMEV battery upgrade program and so we might make a we might make a uh, power wall for off-grid or something like that for some people. Um, it's uh, quite uh, labour intensive to do it and this saves a lot of labour. And again, we also make these bars to suit the original IMEF cells too. So um, if you're recycling the old IMEF cells into a power wall, uh, then you can, uh, you can talk to us and we can supply the, the cells and the battery bits and so on.